Hello and welcome to another video about the Data Cake platform. Today I would like to show you how you can create global and public dashboards on Data Cake. So this is our demonstration workspace. We're going to use 10 sensors in there. And when you click off one of those sensors, you can see the dashboard of each individual sensor. But sometimes you want to combine, um, or in many cases, you want to combine these um, sensors into a separate dashboard into one dashboard and that should show all the available sensors and data cakes so on the sidebar you can see at the top um, there is this dashboarding section and we can just create a new global dashboard by clicking on add dashboard this brings us um, a quick model and we first of all need to provide a name we call this my new global dashboard for example and then we can choose if we want that global um, dashboard to be public or not public we can change this later on but we will set this public and once we press on add dashboard this will create a link for that dashboard which you can use to share this with your customers or so on. So this starts by uh, presenting us an empty dashboard and we can start now by editing and creating our dashboard by clicking here on this short button. When clicking on it, you also see additional um, elements like edit dashboard meter and the widgets here. And when we click on dashboard meter, uh, we can see that it's now public and we can see the link. So we can copy this and just use this everywhere. And we can also enable tabs. I'm going to do this, um, call the first one overview and add another tab, which is then like detail or let's call this trend. We press on update dashboard. And as you can see here, there are now two different tabs available and we can create a layout for each of these tabs. Also, there is this mobile editor for each individual tab. But first of all, let's start with combining or making a short overview dashboard. To add a new widget, we simply press on Add Widget. This pops up this uh, modal selector where you can select the various widget types. And we are going, first of all, to select the value widget. Um, this brings up another modal, the configuration modal for this value widget. Um, the first thing that we need to do is get on data and select the device, like cryo sensor number one, and the field, like temperature. We can provide a unit in here, like Celsius, two decimal places, which is um, super okay. And in appearance, we could also set like this turn color um, or leave it, um, set an individual one, and also highlight color. We can give some icons, um, like something for temperature and engage, we can also set, yeah, like a radio range because this is um, minus 200 to let's say 100 and we can say this is pretty cold and this is pretty warm. So yes, time frame options are there for bringing maximum average and um, other calculations. I can show you this. So we save this bring this um, to the dashboard, make this a little bit larger. Let's duplicate this once more, go back into the configuration, and then on time frame we could select the time range operation. And in here, we can set like, okay, let give, give me the maximum from 24 hours ago up until now. And then it brings us the maximum um, temperature within 24 hours, or you could go for the average temperature. Um, press on maybe just also say this is average um, and copy this, press on save, and then we can make this a little bit smaller. And so we've got the right now, the real time temperature and the average temperature. I'm going to duplicate them now for all individual sensors. There we go. Let's also make this a little bit more structured. So we are going to create a headline widget and we call this location. For example, we press on save, move this onto the dashboard editor. Um, and last but not least, we do want to add like this um, map widget here. We are going to select number device number one and of course device number two with the location and last but not least also device number three with that location. Um, we can also set a time frame. So when it's moving positions, you can see the route that it, your device was moving. Um, select some different visualization types and also in this case, make this a little bit larger 
so that we can see um, this location in here. So this is how we created um, the first dashboard. Um, let's go into the trend tab. And as you can see here, it's empty. So we are going ahead and create a chart widget for that. Chart widgets work in the same way. It pops up a new modal. And the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to bring in a device. So this is our first device. And this is the second device. Also, we want to have the temperature. And also in here, we want to have number three and also the temperature. So now we are able to bring them all on a separate axis. That makes sense if they are, yeah, like in a diff have a different um, way to range. You can choose the axis number one, two, and three. And also because it looks super boring, we just select different types of colors in here. Um, yeah, like that one here. And we also want, um, yeah, to have bar charts, bar charts for all of them. Um, and in the axis settings, I'm going to set the scaling onto auto. That means that it scales the available range it shows you based on the value range of the senders. Um, we could also hide axis if we want to do that um, and use the whole space for it. Um, and basically, we can also define a time range. So in this case, we define a custom one. And I want to have 24 hours ago up until now, but with a resolution um, of 15 minutes. So that means, set this to minutes, that means that each bar represents the amount of 15 minutes. We could also set this to 60 minutes. It looks a bit better, press on save, and we can add this. And if we want to have like a different style in here. We could also go back and then we could say, okay, I want hours, 24 hours, but in this case, I want 31 days ago up until now. And then we can see each bar represents 24 hours over a longer period of time. Save this and exit the edit mode. And we can see these two charts in here. By the way, the sensor data is just random data. Um, so demonstration sensors. So this is why you don't see any useful trend information in here. Um, back into the overview, um, just to once more to show you the mobile editor. So now if you open up this um, dashboard on your mobile editor, you can create this or on your mobile device, you can create this dashboard and derive it from the um, desktop version. And then you can see it creates an individual layout for it. And you would be able now to um, adapt this layout. For example, um, just make it a little bit smaller for each of these senders in here. And you would also be able to um, give an individual kind of um, yeah, name for each sender. The same, um, we can do this with um, the charts in here. Yeah, we created this and we are all set. Let's exit the edit mode. Um, and this is our dashboard. So this is a public one. If you want to share this link with one of your customers, you can do that by simply going into the edit dashboard meter. This is the link. You simply need to copy it. Um, press X, exit this. And now I'm going to open up a new incognito window and going to paste this into our browser. And as you can see, okay, this is the dashboard we just created. It's the public one, so you could use that link and also access it. Um, it's still branded with Data Cake, and we do have this made with Data Cake banner in here. Um, this will be removed when you are on white label, for example. But as long as you use Data Cake, this will be visible for your um, yeah for the ones that have this link. If you change the logo of your workspace, you can see that this Data Cake logo is removed and your own. UM logo is placed in here, even if you're not on the white label version. Yes, that's it. That's how you create dashboards with data cake that are global and that you can share. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.